like a introduction to the uh, end cap video um, 6th of the 6th 2022 so that's the 6th of the 6th 2022 so today or yesterday one year ago this uh, work was finished and we decided we'd uh, wait one year just to see how it all went and um, there's two types of silicon one's the uh, bathroom wet area silicon and this is the uh, standard um, roof and gutter scissor, um, sorry uh, silicon we can see that it's lifted a little bit more with the roof and gutter silicon it seems to me over the long term but all in all it's done much better than I thought it would it's uh, it's sitting down there I didn't want to um, put any holes in it for rivets or uh, screws I decided I wanted to stick it down and the best thing I could find was silicon however a year later it's looking fairly good with the uh, roof and gutter silicon and the uh, and the um, wet area silicon. We can see here, for instance, that that's completely um, stuck down a year later. Whereas this one here, this is the sort of thing we get with the um, roof and gutter silicon. Okay, so the problem here is that it'll stick very well to the tin, but not to the uh, to the plastic. This is a very hard type of plastic. It's got a contour that goes down in toward the gutter there. The reason for this work is because in heavy rain, the the rain used to blow up in the void between the bottom of the, uh, the tin here um, and the roof lining. So it used to get up in here and then it had come down behind the, uh, the fascia and, uh, and that would have caused rot. So this is a good way um, of stopping any moisture getting in between the uh, the tin sheet and uh, uh, lining underneath in in the, amongst that cavity. Um, also, I put sponge. I um, I raised the height of the gutter in this section here, I think, and I put uh, foam expandable, um, not not expandable foam out of a can but expandable foam that you buy in a bag and it, you just press it down and it slowly releases. So that was put on the back edge of the gutter and up against the, the underneath of the uh, tin roof. So this is an example of the um, interior uh, um, bathroom uh, silicon. And we can see here that it has it has stuck down better. Okay, it has done a better job with this um, hard plastic uh, cover there. We can see that it's all stuck down and hasn't really come away anywhere um, seriously. So this has done a better job. Um, also, putting this uh, the silicon, which is very hard, I can't actually I can't seem to um, peel it away from the from the plastic. Okay, it won't come away from the plastic. Here we see another one. I'll try and get that off, and that's that's not going to budge. So yeah, so um, if you watch the video, you'll see all the particulars of the work done a year ago. This was, um, I did use sandpaper on the underneath of this to, um, to scuff it up and give it a key for the um, silicon to bond onto with this section and uh, this section I'm very uh, confident about. So I'll just go across that a little bit. I might, which way is the sun going? I can't really tell if the shade is blocking the video but there you there you go you might be able to see there so that's that's confidence uh, inspiring um, we're now on the right hand side that was the left hand side I'll go in a different direction so the uh, shade doesn't get in the video so this is the um, 
the roof and gutter silicon and we'll see that it's uh, not as good as the other sort so I'll just pan, a, pan along there a bit. And now the, um, the wet area uh, silicon again. So okay, um, I think that's all that the introduction really needs. So if you're looking for something to, um, to stop the, uh, the rain and moisture getting in to that ceiling void and rotting out the front of the, of the joists underneath, um, uh, this should be the video for you. Um, this profile comes in different pro two different profiles. One is sort of more of a flat one. And this is the uh, undulating one. I got this at Bunnings. Okay, I got this at Bunnings. I didn't get the sponge, the expandable sponge that I sat on the back of the gutter from Bunnings. I found uh, what Bunnings had was was unusable. Not just bad quality, but unusable. I got the uh, I got another sort after buying from Bunnings. Um, Bunnings is usually very good. But in this instance, um, what they had wouldn't do the job and I got the sponge from elsewhere. But I got this plastic from Bunnings. Um, yeah, I think that just about concludes it. Uh, don't forget to clean and paint or apply silicon inside the gutter before you uh, put the plastic capping on. Um, because once the capping's on, you won't be able to get to the gutter. I can recommend the silicon after waiting a year and seeing that it's the same as uh, when I first put it down. Um, but I, I would recommend using sandpaper and sandpapering the underneath, the mating surface to the tin. Okay, that could uh, provide a better um, bond with your silicon. Uh, I wouldn't use the roof and gutter silicon, I'd use the, um, the other sort. You'll find it in the video if you pan through what I used on this second section here. I think it's something like in uh, it's, it's wet area uh, silicon, bathroom silicon. Okay. Okay, so that concludes it. Um, the video is about to start. The uh, the work was started, of course, uh, about a year and a half ago. As I say, it's uh, something like the sixth of the sixth, 2022 now. Um, the, the finishing of the work was uh, around about the 6th of the 6th, 2021. Um, also, I've got a video here. This, um, there's a gutter here that wouldn't drain, so I um, got cement sheet or eave sheet. I placed a piece of um, pine timber underneath it for support. Um, I applied silicon to the top of the uh, cement sheet. And now, in heavy downpour, the rain will just come down and either go over the edge or in the gutter there and, uh, and bypass this this gutter here. You can see that there's a gutter there and it goes down there in between the house and the uh, porch roof. Okay, so there's a video uploaded just before this video. Um, other works is using exterior um, no more gaps. I had a bit of a leak underneath this uh, this ridge cap area here and I just started down there and uh, I cleaned it up and I just you can see the uh, the white areas there that's the um, um, outside no more gaps and that's uh, that's fixed it and there's also a, a short video on that but anyway the end cap uh, video coming right up okay so a few months ago it was raining heavily and I'm looking and there's droplets falling down across the front here and I'm thinking how can it be even you know what you know what is it and the funny thing was was that it was coming down from the fascia not the gutter so it's coming 
through in between the gutter and the fascia and I'm thinking okay maybe the water's running over the lip uh, underneath and down the uh, fascia board but you know that wasn't the case and I went up and checked and the uh, the gutter there was no water in it so I'm thinking what's going on you know there's a gutter around the outside of the house here that I patched up with silicon I treated the rust and patched it up with silicon and I'm thinking okay it's flowing up over the top of the gutter and this is cement sheet running along the top of the cement sheet hitting the fascia board and just coming out that way but uh, that wasn't the case either over the years there has been some rot I had to replace the end of this area here that's renewed so you know whatever the situation is and I actually know what it is now that caused that rot you see and we've got situations like especially here where you can see the water comes through okay so we have to do something about that I'll go up on top and uh, and explain what's going on okay but first of all we're down uh, on the driveway here and when I zoom in you'll be able to see along there the fascia and we can see where the water has been coming through there so also we can see that it it's not dripping over the top edge of the uh, of the gutter. It's coming directly through that gap, right? And what's happening is on the roof. I'll show that um, there's water run back. So what? Because the the uh, the tin's fairly level. The water's sitting there on the edge and slowly running back and under. And missing the gutter. Okay, well, um, I'm guessing that the snake is going to win, and uh, I suppose this uh, work will have to wait until another weekend. When our snake friend uh, moves on, but anyway, that's the uh, you know that's the the top of the deck roof there, and what's happening is the water is going to the edge, and that's fairly level, and the edge maybe from people working and standing on that has bowed a little bit just uh, just through there. And so the edge is very level. Um, and the water is hitting the edge and running back. Now I've got a few options. I can put a bead of silicon right on the edge and that will create a lip. And the water will hit that and drip down into the, um, into the gutter running across the front there. Um, another thing I can do is bend the very edge of the lower parts of the undulation down to create a lip and the water will hit that and drip down into the, uh, the gutter. Um, now there was another uh, there was another issue there and, and what that is is um, the edge of the corrugated iron doesn't really come out all that much so if you have a just straight a straight drop down into the gutter it's almost hitting the back of the gutter so by bending the corrugation by bending the edge down um, I'm getting closer to the to the back edge of the gutter so um, I do have something else to go on with and the snake is starting to take an interest um, of me and his head he's looking at me he's starting to move now I've, I've woken him up 
So that's his head and his, uh, yeah, he's eaten something because his belly, just here, is swollen. So he's thinking of getting out of here and so am I. Okay, I've worked out why the snake's trapped up here and that's because I removed the ladder for a project. I, I'm also into um, abstract art and uh, I've done a painting during the week. I used that to put the uh, the canvas on. It's got two screws, one either side. Uh, so I've removed that and the snake can't get down, you see. So the snake will clear out um, tonight and uh, I'll continue on probably tomorrow. Okay, it's the 14th of the uh, 4th now um, and our friend is gone. So, okay, let's go and have a look at the uh, this problem here. Okay, well one thing that's surprising is there, there does seem to be enough fall, so I'll just show the... Uh, So that's, that's falling that way. If I lift the back up, then we can see that there's uh, ample runoff. Um, it's not bowed anywhere. And yet we can see where the water gathers here on the end. And if you get up here in the morning when the dew's been on the sheet you'll get pools of water here now that's the uh, that's the gutter and the gutter ends just there okay so there is a bit but not much of extension over the gutter so just see if I get that level, oops, that side's broken, so if I get that reasonably level, then we see here, I might be able to get an idea of how much, looks like 30 millimeters back from the edge there, so, um, okay. So in summary, what I'm seeing here is it should work. There shouldn't be any problems. There seems to be ample um, roof sheet over the gutter. Um, there's a fall. Because if we... We'll take you over to the unit. Okay. That's where I live. That's my room. Or my small unit. And we can see that there's a bit of fall, but not much. Okay, so that's hardly any fall at all, and yet there's very little water collection here that I could uh, see, but the end is bent down a bit, and that's the difference. So they've come along, they've installed it, and they've bent this down, I'd say, maybe four mil down. And this very edge is down a bit further, so uh, that's all it takes. Okay, so it's not much. So now we'll go back over to the porch. So You know, that's a bit of a surprise. It should work, but it doesn't, so... I'll just... try and retain my balance and uh, my breath. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, so... What happens is, it, it runs back up... under there. I don't know how good a job I'm doing here of... Uh, I can't really see the camera or what I'm filming. I can see my finger. 
where is it? Here. Okay. So what it's doing is it's collecting here and it's running down and back up underneath there. And it's it's dripping down. It's dripping down on that. So it's going up under, dripping down on that, and it's going in between the along the back of the um, the gutter there and down in between the, the back of the gutter and the fascia. Oh yeah, it's running back underneath and dripping onto the cement sheet, see? So that's... That's... Um, that's cement sheet. So anyway, I I was going to get um, sheet, attach it underneath with silicon, and then rivet it, and then bend the end down. However, I think I've found a better way, and that's with a type of foam that you pack up underneath from the bottom of the gutter to the underneath of the sheet. And it's like a foam with uh, apparently um, bitumen on it. But what we might do is uh, try and catch it in the act just for uh, education or entertainment uh, purposes. What I'll do is I'll tip this uh, water along here, we'll let it go down and we'll try and catch it in the act. Just do about five or six rows, that's going down there now. So, okay, let's go and have a look at it in action. Hopefully. not going to do it is it okay what I'll what I'm going to do here is um, what I'm going to say is in heavy rains my newest theory is heavy rains what's happening is the rain is going in on an angle okay and going onto the cement sheet and dripping down behind the uh, the gutter and the fascia. I think that's possibly... Okay. That's what's happening. Okay, well I've been wrong before, you know, that's uh, absolutely for sure. Now, uh, I went looking for that uh, undulating sheet, same profile that was bent down on the end, however, there's no such thing, but what there is, is this foam, and it seems to have some type of uh, thickening agent, maybe a type of, uh, okay, it could be very thin um, bitumen, so... Okay, I'll go and study this for about a uh, couple of minutes and then we'll we'll see if we can get this happening. Okay, what I'm getting so far is that you're supposed to compress this before putting it into place so that it will expand and uh, create a watertight, watertight seal. Um, this Tremco, um, 
it says here standard corrugated profile which is uh, which is mine what I need um, profile D so we come around here and it's uh, yeah profile D so this well I'm assuming it looks like it's going to match the uh, the profile there so the compression you know that's for dirt is only slight compression but when you get up to heavy rain which is me it's 70 percent uh, compression and standing water is 75 so but you know I can put it in place looking like maybe this one possibly could be we've got it's in sections so you know one be easy to see when I get it in out of the bag it's got one side is straight and the other one is undulated it looks like I may not have to stagger the uh, the rows because we've got these different formations on the end here. So yeah, okay. Well, I'll go up. I'll clean the gutter and uh, we'll start putting it on. Okay, what I'm going to have to find is some uh, some foam to go under that, so to pack it out. Another problem is uh, down this side here. This was all rusted out when I got the place, and uh, I had to replace the uh, the gutter. But the back edge of the gutter isn't as high, so. Okay, I might have figured out a way to deal with the um, the original gutter with the high back on it. You can take these two, so that's one piece. You can take these two, you can turn them around, and you can form one piece with two sides. So here's the high side of the back of the gutter. I can rest that on there and come along with this one and go under the uh, the corrugations. So that'd be looking a little bit like this, but uh, slightly different. Another option I have is uh, expansion foam, and just spraying expansion foam along there, letting it expand and trimming the bit that uh, sticks out the front, you know. Uh, with that one I'd say could possibly just about uh, flip a coin. So that's uh, that's the problem there. Although this might be just high enough, that there is a gap there. Might I might be able to uh, go all the way along with the foam. But you can see it better here, what's happening is the rain's coming in here and dripping, falling down behind the uh, the back of the gutter and going down there. And that's the fascia there in between the cement sheet. So, you know, if I put uh, expansion foam along there, I can't get that out. You see, if that, if that doesn't work or if it, you know, mould or rot develops behind there, you know, it's very hard to get that out, whereas the uh, the packet of expansion foam I bought today, that's removable, see? Well, I think what's going to happen here is um, I'm going to get a piece of metal and put it on the back of the gutter on the left-hand side there and build that uh, the height up to match uh, the right-hand side here. I'm going to get that uh, foam rubber, I think it's 25 by 25 block. Um, lengths and then I'm going to put this on top um, if that doesn't work then I'll, I'll have to uh, get the expansion foam um, but I've got a terrible feeling that I've been here before that I've worked all of this out before and completely forgotten about it so yeah I remember having foam on my list and uh, 
and metal and, and things and just not knowing what it was so uh, yeah I must be getting old or something okay so what I'm doing at the moment is uh, I've got a, a piece of uh, a 30 mil packing sheet there and I've got I've got that underneath there and that's what I need that width for the uh, for the foam so I've measured up from the from the gutter, the bottom of the gutter, up to uh, the bottom edge there. And uh, that happens to be 90, I've measured down. And I'm gonna trim this. I can keep I can keep the bent edge on the top, but I can't keep it on the bottom, so. Okay, I'll get that done now. Okay, so um, the silicon's on. The silicon's vertical so that if there is any build-up of water behind, it can come down uh, in between. So uh, I've got some bricks there to hold it up against the, uh, the back of the gutter there. Okay, 21st of the 4th. 2021 so in other words uh, you know middle of uh, coronavirus COVID-19 and uh, the crypto craze so anyway back to the job so during the week I've got this uh, this foam filler expanding uh, foam not in a can but uh, on a roll I think it's 25 by 25 millimeters and I'll put that on the uh, on the top of the gutter and then this will go on top of that so that's what I was talking about before um, interestingly enough during the week I also found this plastic uh, plastic profile and uh, it does bend down at the front Okay, it's uh, it's in the right profile. Um, the information I can share with you is the uh, the information tag there. Okay, and that will slip down like that. It it'll only go back so far because you might be able to see. With the design it sort of goes down to a low front here so that won't ride over the top ridge it goes flat here and then it drops down so we've only got say from the the flow over we've got 40 45 millimeters there to to go into the gutter but i think it's uh, better than nothing so that'll be a second backup so i'll put the foam on and then i'll install this i'll have to check out the uh the uh, screw heads there so that was at Bunnings, I found that at Bunnings Australia. Okay. So what I'll do now is just take out the bricks. And uh, and then we're right to uh, install the foam. Got a little bit of water here. And that goes up. This seems to be a low point. There's the drainage there. Okay, and that, that goes up to this point. I think that's just uh, due from the night time and, uh, and the rest is dry. Okay. Okay. So that's it there. The top one, Polycarb ACS Flashing Sun Tough and 127 by... I don't know, 5 by 15 centimetres. Um, wool, 
Coro clear. On second thoughts, I'm going to call that uh, VAL as in valley, Coro as in corrugated, and clear being uh, clear plastic. Okay, so that's it there. Um, what I did was I got it together in the gutter before I put it inside the, uh, the cavity there. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what we've got. I don't know how well that's going to show up, but that's all the way along. Okay, um, one surprising thing I did find out about this uh, expanding foam was where it's too compressed, it will tend to warp. So where I measured for the um, what I thought was the right distance with a bit of compression, um, it's actually better for it to be fairly loose and have a bit more room. So at the two ends, it uh, it's compressed. Where it's too compressed, it just moved a bit, but I was able to correct that. Before I forget, which uh, happens on a fairly regular basis, as you uh, might already know, um, do this work before it gets too hot, okay? So first thing in the morning, this would be your first uh, go across before you go on with other work, because this uh, this iron heats up uh, pretty fast. Pretty fast, it, uh, it gets quite hot up here. Okay, well, um, there's a little bit of a problem, and that is that you'll see that there's two ridges close together here. So there's one there, one there, and then two here, and that's where there's a join. So in other words, the joins aren't consistent with the, uh, the ups and downs of the, um, the roof sheeting. So that's going to be a problem. So pretty much I'm only going to be able to use a piece the same width and then join it by overlapping just as, as it's done on the sheet join so that's quite expensive I think this is about $30 a pop okay well um, you know using I can't use an offcut so I'll have to have an entire piece for uh, for every piece of sheet uh, that's going to cost about $300 to go across the, uh, the top here um, Anyway, that's a bit unfortunate, but yeah, that's an inherent uh, design that the, the two top ridges will be closer together than the, the general um, curvature of the uh, sheeting. But that's a mock-up there of what's uh, going to happen along the, uh, the top of the sheet. What I intend to do is silicon a bead along the front here and then wipe it off, wipe it flat on the uh, the plastic so that will um, create a barrier for the water and the water will have to go up and down um, I've cut out the, uh, the screw hole there and that tucks under the, uh, the capping okay so as for this part here there's not much I can do except maybe maybe notch out a piece here in fact that's what I'll do, I'll notch out a piece so that it comes to the end there um, at this point uh, a good tip is when you install this uh, underneath the, un the, uh, the other one so it goes in like this uh, this can't twist okay so you have to make sure that when you join them together and push them into the cavity that this doesn't get turned uh, throughout the process okay okay well uh, it's all back out um, the reason is this poor quality uh, expanding uh, foam from Bunnings uh, so what I've done is I've got some more of this I went back to the shop I got uh, 25 by 25 millimeter uh, square uh, pack of this to put underneath I'm going to check, apparently I was told at the shop that I can't get different thicknesses with this. I want to double check that before installing the uh, the 25 or the, the block um, expanding foam underneath this. I'd, I'd rather it one piece. 
Okay, so that's the real expanding foam. This was about a hundred uh, hundred dollars, and uh, that's the information there. I also got 10 um, Coro wall flashing and uh, looking at $300 there so somebody's on to a, uh, a real winner I had to buy it and uh, yeah not cheap okay this is obviously of uh, far better quality so this is the same manufacturer and that's the uh, the top and they don't make a, um, a thicker uh, uh, product but they do provide this uh, packer for underneath and uh, that interlocks well it's got a sort of a, a bitumen uh, finish that um, means it won't slide and uh, I'll just show you how I'm installing it Okay, yes, that uh, press tight is a, uh, a much better product. Um, it, it hasn't turned, it's just stayed uh, untwisted. So We can see that uh, it's just, uh, the sun's gone out, but however we can see there. Okay, so there we go. So that um, it rides across the uh, different um, heights quite well. So this is a short height from there to there, and uh, then it increases from this point back. It's an extra 10, 15 millimeters thick here. So uh, yeah, that's really good stuff. It's got a good wall to it. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that's. The extra work I did was just, I just uh, lay on my belly and just made sure, I ran underneath the foam to make sure that it was the same margin, about 5mm or 7mm hanging over the edge and uh, on the inside I used uh, this small pick, the back of the pick, that's what you use on any sort of rubber surfaces just to push anything in and line it up. So. Uh, I tell you what, I think it's a good idea to uh, have a couple of weeks break away from this work. I'll come back and uh, inspect it from time to time just to make sure that it's not moving or uh, pushing itself out. And uh, then we'll install the, uh, the clear um, capping to the front here. Is it a better solution not to have any um, foam filler in that gap and have the, uh, the circulation? And just to put the, uh, the clear capping on now. I'm sure there's every possibility, you know, only time will tell, so uh, if in four, five, seven, ten years from now you drop me a line, I'll, um, I'll be able to, uh, to let you know. Okay, it's the 8th of the 5th, 2021, and uh, now we're going to uh, start to put the, uh, the plastic capping on the edge along there. So, uh, yeah, when this work is complete, that's, uh, I think, the end of the third go-across. So there's been a renovation on the, uh, the house, the garden, garage, and uh, separate unit that uh, I live in. Um, once that's done, then uh, hopefully, you know, I pray that this is uh, the end of the work. And there's no more workload and I can start to live my life after... Uh, 
11 or 12 years of uh, owning this uh, part ownership of this place. It could be more like 13 uh, years of ownership and uh, I've got other interests to pursue. Uh, for instance, I'm looking into um, music production as a hobby instead of uh, uh, vehicles. So uh, anyway, I digress. Let's get this work done. Okay, so here's the capping and I'll show that again just in case it didn't uh, work out on a part of the video elsewhere. It's just a undulating profile with a front cap that drops into the gutter so it'd be similar to uh, just doing this so for instance so you didn't get uh, wind and rain blowing uh, <coughs> moisture up underneath into the cavity here and rotting out uh, what's underneath um, I got this at Bunnings like I said earlier I'm just feeling a bit dizzy at the moment and um, yeah, okay, well let's get on to it. This, this is a profile to slip up underneath uh, the end cap there. And then it has to uh, latch underneath each joint. So I've undone this holding this side and uh, this, when long enough, will go under there. This side will go over the top of that. Oh, just a sec. Okay, it's alright, I'm back. Alright. So we're just going to do that all the way along and I'm going to attempt to use silicon so I'm going to put a silicon bead along here so that it, it squishes out the end it must it must come out the end so that the water doesn't uh, flow over and then it's got to be made flat and these bolts have to be uh, checked out so okay Okay, at this stage I have checked the foam, that it's uh, it's all sitting properly, and yes, uh, it's looking good, so... I'll just uh, pan along there. Okay. So, that... That hasn't moved. Okay, so that's all good. Okay, it's always a very good idea, especially with plastic, to to, uh, to do um, tests just to make sure that it's going to stick. Now, uh, this plastic is very hard and it's got a very um, shiny type of um, non-bonding uh, finish. So we want to make sure that the silicon is going to bond to the plastic, and that's actually not the case. The silicon won't bond to the um, the test strip here. It will bond to the metal. Okay. See there that that's. I can put all my effort into that, but that won't won't really come away from the uh, the iron. However, the plastics a different story. I'll demonstrate that now. Okay, so unfortunately For some reason it has it can bond to the plastic Okay, we see around this edge here That that's bonded and it won't come away, but the rest I think it's got to do with how much air circulation it can get That's well and truly bonded to the steel it hasn't bonded to the plastic, only the outside, and that's not really um, sufficient. So I think that there's no air getting to the silicon because it's it's um, bonded on the outside, and the inside's got no uh, no air. Okay, let's go and have some go and have a look at some other uh, tests. Okay, so we've got a few more experiments here. One is a sanded experiment where I've sanded the inside of both um, facing surfaces and put uh, silicon in there just to see if that'll uh, bond the silicon to the plastic. This 
This is an aerated, uh, so that's the 13th of the 5th, uh, 21. And at the moment we've got, we've got 20th of uh, May, um, 2021. So that's seven days old, so the silicon should have had uh, plenty of time to uh, cure. Um, this is an aerated experiment where um, I've put the silicon on and then I've, I've pulled it apart and put it back on three times. Okay, so I'll put the silicon on, then I've, I've ripped it apart and um, put it back on, ripped it apart, put it back on and ripped it apart, put it back on one more time. So that was done on the 12th of the 5th, 21. So that's, uh, that's got an extra day on this one. So that's uh, eight days old, the silicon. And um, this is a non-aerated one. This one won't work for sure. So this one's similar to the one on the uh, tin roof. Um, it hasn't been sanded and it hasn't been aerated. Uh, uh, that's on the 12th of the 5th, so that's, uh, that's the same as this one. Now the silicon on the outside does stick very, very well. Okay, so it's not that the silicon won't stick to the plastic. It will stick to the plastic, but when you put them together, um, there's no oxygen getting to the uh, silicon and it won't bond. Okay, so I'll just demonstrate... silicon is bonded to the to the outside where it could get oxygen okay so that's that's well and truly bonded that's that's a successful test okay that's fairly successful okay so that's the results of that one so what we're going to do, I think, I think it'll be, I'll pull these apart, we'll find that it doesn't work. Um, then we'll go to this one, that's the aerated one, and this is the, um, the sanded one. That I just uh, tried to focus it and it wouldn't go into focus, so I expect these to pull apart. That's not the case. It's not the case. Okay, it is the case. Okay. So if I can pull that off by hand, then that's a failed experiment. Okay. So that that went like that, and we've got that. That's not satisfactory. So it's pulled off here. And on this surface here, that's on the outside, and that's that has bonded very, very well. Okay. Okay, our next experiment is the aerated one. Now, this this experiment, if I can get it into focus, will be interesting. Okay, let's have a look. This is the aerated one. Um, so I'm expecting this to be, it's a fairly good chance of being successful, okay, so I'm going to use the pliers and let's see. No, it's not successful. Well, that's interesting. So it's definitely the, the oxygen is not getting to the silicon once you press it down, you see. It's, it's a little bit like it's still being in the uh, tube before it uh, comes out of the tube. Okay. That's not successful. The, the manufacturers of this, uh, this product are going to have to roughen the, uh, 
the plastic up, I think, I'm assuming, uh, it's not good to assume, of course, this could fail. This one could fail as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, if this failed, you would have to use maybe a type of builder's glue. I'd have to set up new um, tests with uh, builder's glue. Okay. But, you know, over time, builder's glue can get hard and crack, and, and, and this can still come off. I can't really screw it down um, because I'm putting holes in the, uh, in the sheet. I might be able to rivet it. Maybe big rivets, I'm thinking. But the, the edge along here is still going to have to be waterproof because you've got your tin sheet and the edge. Okay, and so say, say that's the gutter along there, you're going to put that on top of the, the tin sheet. And water's still going to come in under here slowly and trickle down and it can still get in behind. And, but, uh, okay. Let's see, now this is the roughened, uh, the roughened experiment. So, okay, so let's get our backs into this one. Yes, and that's failed as well. Okay, so, um, all right, so the results are in. Uh, that's that's no good. So the results are that yes, silicon will stick to plastic on the outside if it's exposed to uh, oxygen. Okay, that's oh no, no, it won't. It you know what I mean? It's not. Yeah, no, it won't. Okay, well that's a surprise. Okay, um, I'll just switch off the camera and gather my thoughts. Okay, here's my thoughts on this. I, I can see now that silicon, in fact, won't bond to the plastic. Um, in fact, it won't even properly bond if it's uh, on the outside of the plastic. We established surprisingly there. And of course the heat and cold is, is going to, eventually the plastic's going to come off and you'll have silicon left on the, uh, on the roof sheeting. Okay, so, so what this means is uh, possibly some other type of uh, product has to be, has to be found. Um, that could be builder's, builder's glue, but um, I now have to uh, gather my thoughts and uh, set up a whole lot of new... Um, um, experiments at this point in time. Okay, it's 2nd of June, 2nd of the uh, 6th, 2021. Um, I have a hernia operation in six days, so I have to um, get this work done now, including finishing off the, uh, the capping on top of the roof. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, the full length, I think it's one meter, I'm going to use two rivets on the two outside edges and two in between. So, so that'll be six uh, rivets with um, silicon, some type of silicon. I think it'll probably be the um, maybe the 11FC um, Sika product, which is petroleum based, along the very outside edge, just to make sure that the water um, doesn't get underneath and goes over the top and down. Um, here we have to remember that not only are we dealing with um, very high temperatures in summer, but we're also dealing with uh, water. So it's um, it's not, and we we're trying to stick plastic down, which isn't going to work obviously because of the tests. Um, so the rivets will hold it down. The silicon will make sure that no water gets underneath. What I'll do is I'll pan around and uh, just explain everything here about the tests. So this is the second lot of tests that we're going to uh, look into. I'll explain each test and then uh, show an example. So this is a test board. This is a sicker products. This on this side 
is the 11 FC it comes in a um, uh, type of dispenser and this is the Sikaflex Pro it comes in this uh, hot dog type of uh, um, packaging um, these are the tests to see how the uh, Sikaflex uh, would uh, clean up and it cleans up with fuel uh, solvent uh, these are the products that they insert in between um, um, cement slabs just to keep the water out or try and keep it out it's petroleum based it's not uh, full silicon although it is um, similar so this is the product that I've got my money on as being the best out of all of them although it, uh, it probably is probably not going to be good enough to hold the plastic down on its own so anyway this is uh, Sikaflex 11FC and these are the tests here and this is Sikaflex Pro you get this in Bunnings or a, a, you know your biggest hardware outlet and these are the um, tests here for the uh, Sikaflex Pro now just judging by the structure um, this was done these tests were done about three days ago so they've had time to cure um, that was done on the uh, 29th of the 5th 21 it's now the 3rd of the 6th 21 so three days later the the actual uh, structure or form I would say that this one compared to this you might be able to I'll be able to see there that this is um, a harder type of silicon. This is less um, less hard. It it's much the same as silicon. Okay, but this is a harder one, and this is a softer type of uh, cured um, finish. So this could be a better product so far as longevity is concerned although I see here that it is in fact not sticking to the uh, to the cement sheet at all or not really satisfactorily some areas it is okay this one that's also seems to be peeling off a bit okay that's a Sikaflex Pro and uh, now for the 11 FC that's a harder compound and that seems to be sticking better that could be the better product yeah in fact yeah that's definitely a better product you can see there it's not coming away as easily okay so that's that's the product I'll be using so surprisingly this uh, this hot dog type of dispenser the, the product in that doesn't seem to be as um, as strong it doesn't have as uh, as good ad adherence to the uh, cement sheet and uh, this is the more industrial um, one um, this this could be better for uh, adhesion and a glue type of uh, product and this is the one they put in the you know the joins in the uh, in the cement uh, slabs okay so I'll just pan around and explain that um, this is the original tests made on the 12th of the 5th 21 so these are more than um, half a month old and it's just to see, you know, is uh, 
the, the longer that the, uh, the, the silicon's on the plastic, does that, um, does that help with adhesion, you know, in that the, uh, the silicon's curing, so that's that test. Um, we've got many different tests here, this is um, going from the least expected to work to the most expected to work. This is uh, normal silicon, but a thin, a thin bead. And we see that the silicon does stick w very well on top of the uh, plastic. Um, this is wet area silicon, uh, thin bead. This is uh, builder's uh, glue, used for um, gluing down um, flooring. But that's, uh, I'm not going to use that because that's um, not meant for outside or heat, uh, extreme heat. Um, this is wet area, thin bead and builder's glue. Um, the plastic sanded by the way to provide a, a key. Um, this is Sikaflex 11FC which is that one there and this is Sikaflex Pro which I thought would be better which which it actually isn't. That's uh, that one there. Okay so we'll we'll do those tests. We'll, we'll pull them apart and see what results we get in. This is a, a list of um, observations. Okay. And we'll go through those tests. Um, I'll read them out and explain them after in this section of the video. This is the roof and gutter silicon. That's what I've been using as the uh, the normal silicon. Um, this is the builder's glue and this is the wet area silicon. That's what I'll be using in the uh, the actual uh, putting the end caps down. Okay this is what I'm going to use to pull the, uh, the tests apart. We're going to do one of these at the start to see if um, how that compares to the, uh, the earlier test. This one goes back under the house to be uh, tested after my operation to see if a longer cure of time or the longer the silicon is on the end cap um, to see if that uh, is, uh, is uh, better. Okay, so this is the original silicon test. Um, this is about, instead of being say three days old or, or a bit more, um, we've now got this test has been set up for a couple of weeks so let's see how that goes okay that's I can see that's not working we can see that's coming straight apart um, so that's the problem with silicon you see okay so that's why I'm continuing to do these tests because we've got this uh, situation where the the silicon's not adhering. This is not sanded, okay? I haven't these this wasn't sanded, so um, we'll continue on because these other tests I have sanded to prov provide a um, a better uh, surface. Okay, the next test is uh, normal silicon with a thin bead and this has been sanded. The, the mating surfaces have been sanded so we see that that's got a very good adhesion on the outside, smooth non-sanded -san uh, surface. Okay, if it oh. Right. Okay. That is coming off, so that has failed. But there is a, a thin bead here in the middle. And one of the tests that I've got on the sheet of paper is to, to actually rub the silicon into the surface before putting it together. And that, that could actually work, but that'll be too late because I will have put the end caps on. So, normal silicon thin bead instead of a thick bead and and I'm hoping that uh, more air will get to it but anyway let's have a look it's 
bit tougher to get the uh, just bear with me for a few minutes okay okay that's on the outside so there's no silicon on the inside although it might looks like the, the only silicon that's stuck and this has been sanded is here 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 um, here there and there that's on the outside so that's that's failed and that um, that's normal silicon that's not uh, wet area silicon okay now this has been sanded the mating surfaces have been sanded this is wet area it's a thin bead um, made on the 26th of the 5th 21 um, the previous one was also on the 26th of the 5th 21 so so yeah three days old so let's see um, this is wet area silicon oh interesting Okay, that's interesting. We've got better adhesion, better adhesion, and better sticking with the uh, with the wet area silicon. Okay, so the previous test was the uh, just the roof and gutter silicon. Okay, that's in fact that's for all the previous. And this is the first, the first test with the um, the wet area silicon, and you know that's that's fairly good. There's adhesion, good adhesion on both surfaces. There's there's nothing on the outside, so that's. That's an improvement. That's pretty well what I was looking for. That was tougher to uh, pull apart, and there's also distributed adhesion. And again, this has been sanded. Okay. Um, okay. This is builder's bog. That's that. That it. It is. Um, it is uh, petroleum based. It's not water-based um, however I think that the uh, the heat will um, affect this so I don't really trust this but we'll see we'll see how it goes it is only an experiment after all so okay that's no good okay that's no good has it has it cured no it hasn't okay it hasn't yet cured um, this bit here is cured this bit here is not okay that is not dried and that's that's three days old it was aerated it was pulled apart and put to back together I wouldn't trust that outside anyway, but that's interesting to know. Um, what we might do is just save this, and we'll we'll do this after when this has had more time to dry. So that's the wet area, which is also good to see how that'll go over time. But the the wet area is it is um, acceptable. So I may not have to put the rivets in. We'll save this one for later. The thing about using rivets is you can remove the end cap. So if you had to remove the end cap for some reason, you could um, drill out the rivets and um, just take it off because it'll only have a thin bead of uh, uh, wet area silicon on the on the back edge of it along along here. Okay. 
So that goes down into the gutter so the, the water doesn't blow up inside that cavity um, above the gutter and below the, uh, the roof sheeting that, that rots out that, the wood on the front there. But, okay, well anyway, let's, uh, let's get on with it. So this is the 11 FC, that's, that's this one. Okay, so let's see how that goes. We've got some bits on the outside here. That is that is stuck very well to the. Oh no. Okay, that's yeah, that's a fail. Okay, so it's it's looking like the wet area. Silicon is the best so far. That's a complete fail. So let's see. Yeah, no, that's. Absolutely no good. Okay. So that one is that test there, and that's it's no good. So this was sanded as well. Okay. Okay, that's no good. Okay, and this is the Sikaflex Pro. So this is this one here, which is the industrial uh, strength one. Sikaflex Pro, the hot dog, which I'm describing the packet it's in. 29th of the 5th, that's now the 2nd of the 6th. So uh, 29, you know, um, one, two, a couple of days then. Um, sanded. Mating surface has been sanded, um, uh, brushed on, I think that means, uh, oh, okay, this was put on with a paintbrush and it was pulled apart and um, put together, so it's been aerated to help the curing process, but let's see, no, no, no good at all, complete fail. Okay. That's good to know. So this, as I say, is possibly good enough to hold it. I was pretty impressed with the uh, the adhesion of the test. Um, so let's look into that one a little bit more. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the wet area, silicon there. So let's have a look at that. Just evenly distributed. It has come away, in fact, I don't think it's come away completely. There does seem to be a bit of a silicon surface even where it's separated. You know, this could be wishful thinking, but, you know, it, it does seem, it's on, that, it's, on the, uh, it's on the underneath of it. It's on both mating surfaces and it's, it's bonded pretty well. I might be able to see there that it's actually got a thin layer of silicon even where it's separated. The fingernail test is, well, it's not the best, but it may not be completely cured yet, you see. I am able to gouge that away from the mating surfaces. Um, now it's looking like the, uh, the rivets again. Now this is the, the, the better of the, uh, all the tests and it may not have time to cure properly. There is that, under, that other test under the house so that'll be after the operation which could be a month before we look at that result and that will be on the video so. This, is, this video is as a documentation and also for you to, the, you the viewer to, um, to make up your mind. Um, it's looking like the rivets again. I do have to get this work done. An operation, you never know if you're gonna like make it through. So yeah, that's a tough one. It's looking like the rivets and wet area along the back edge. Okay, well, let's do it. Okay. Okay, it is the 3rd of the 10th, 2022. And uh, these have been sitting under the house for a while. 
Um, this is a long-term test. I don't think that's wet area silicon. I think that's just uh, roof and gutter silicon. Um, that uh, that's the date there when it was uh, when this test was uh, made up. So this was put together a little bit less than uh, a year and a half ago. Um, this one here is also a year and a half old and uh, we've got a thin bead of the wet area silicon there and uh, builders glue. Um, I remember a year and a half ago I said that the builders glue probably wouldn't stand up to uh, the heat of the sun but uh, we'll just go ahead and, and see how these stood up to the test of time. Okay a long term test of roof and gutter silicon It's even worse, I don't believe it. It really is even worse with the uh, roof and gutter silicon. Yeah, okay, well, my suspicions are uh, confirmed, I suppose. Uh, the blob on the outside, yep, same thing. So over time, roof and gutter silicon will, uh, will release. Okay, we're going to get, uh, we're going to find a winner, a long-term winner out of this one. Um, so again, the builder's glue and the wet area silicon. The builder's glue is standing up to a lot of pressure. It's, as you can see, that's opened wide right up. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, however, the builder's glue uh, is very, very strong and, and has uh, bonded very well to both sides. It's uh, it's bonded there and there and that's exactly what we're looking for in a product when gluing these uh, these plastic together. Uh, that is sanded. I did sand that. Um, now let's have a look at the wet area glue. Uh, that's that's oh good Oh god. Okay, so a bit's just peeled off of the silicon. Uh, there goes another piece. Okay, so, yep, yeah, look, this, this is the proof right here that um, silicon's not going to work on this. Uh, yeah, that's just peeling straight off. Okay. Um, so we do have a winner, and that that is the builder's glue. So at least we get something out of this uh, this test. Again, the silicon. It's, uh, it's not looking good for the silicon, and the builder's glue is the winner. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the winner. Um, that is not the uh, acrylic type of uh, builder's glue. I'd say that'll wash off in petrol. Yep, petroleum based. Okay, it's now the uh, the third of the tenth, two thousand and twenty-two. Um, anybody wondering about how the operation went? It's now a year and a half since the operation. Um, it was quite stressful, but I came out the other end 
and the lump was still there. Um, so either it's a wrong diagnosis or it's uh, just a benign type of a, a thing that I could have been born with or, or I got when I was young. So the operation made absolutely no difference. I highly recommend changing your diet and exercising instead of going for operations. Okay. There's a bird there, I think. I wonder if I can get him in the pit. Oh no, he's flying away. So yeah, that is to say that it wasn't a, a hernia. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't even know if it's an, just an unsuccessful operation. Okay. But uh, I'm completely fit. I go for a long run around in the bush. Um, I do a lot of exercises I used to do when I was young made no difference to how strong I was there wasn't anything wrong with me before the operation I felt fine so just be careful when you go to the doctor be careful with operations now let's do the list this is a number of notes that I've uh, made up we'll go through them one by one it's a bit of a scribble it's a bit messy yes but uh, I have a lot to get through um, okay well never mind this one but um, Okay, test, uh, a test I have to do is actually rubbing the silicon onto the plastic. So on one of the tests I'm going to do in future is to rub the silicon on to, just to make sure. You know, I have seen some videos where, you know, that, that's been beneficial. So this was just put on with a, you know, it was just sort of put on like, like thin bead, the two caps were pushed together and that's it but we're gonna actually do a, an experiment with rubbing it on um, wear throwaway clothing um, yeah I thought that this would may not cure I thought that it would um, stay soft and that would be its uh, application and after it's cured but and so if you got it on your clothing it'd be like grease and it'd go through the washing machine and contaminate everything but that's not the case it does it does form a skin on the outside of it probably don't have to wear throwaway clothing the reason is yes it will get on the clothing and it won't silicon won't come off um, clothing but it will dry and so you can so you can rewash it and and use it um, um, is Sika 11 FC are these two products the same no they're not this one isn't as tough but it's I think it's got another application uh, this could be for sort of like adhesion and this could be like um, just a gap filler um, glue gun you know could could I use a glue gun to uh, to glue the end caps together that's an experiment I don't know um, my my guess is that the heat could affect it because if, if you if you've got a glue tube and you warm it up and you melt it, um, you know that that same process will happen on on the roof. Although, if the molecular form is changed, if it's changed from a, a silicon to a plastic, then it could work. But I don't think it'll stand up to the test of time using a glue gun um, with the heat and the cold um, as well. The heat could re-melt the glue from the glue gun with, you know, the heat from the, the roofing in summer. And it, it could melt again. Also, it could become brittle over time, right? So, the glue gun, if you want to do your own test, you could try a glue gun. And But also, after you put the glue on, it's going to form a skin and there's going to be too much time before, unless you've got an industrial quick uh, glue gun, there's going to be too much time before putting the glue on and sticking it down okay so it'll form a skin and um, it'll probably probably won't um, adhere so that's a long shot the glue gun um, super glue mechanic at work you know he said what about super glue well super glue will it probably won't melt with the heat but it'll become brittle and I think the the end cap will separate and just sort of uh, shift and detach from the uh, roof sheeting 
Um, yeah, we've seen the experiment on the uh, on the cement sheet there. We've looked into that. Um, with the Sikaflex 11FC, there is another dispenser, but it's got a bigger thread on the end. This is a standard type of nozzle, although this this thread for this nozzle for the Sikaflex is different to the Sellies. Okay, to these uh, Sellies um, roof and gutter, Sellies liquid nails, and Sellies uh, wet area. Okay, so you won't be able to use one of these nozzles on on this. I did consider no more gaps, um, and also I considered plasterers glue, but plasterers glue and no more gaps are water soluble, and so they're not going to work outside being around water. I did consider using tar. From a you know a big pot four liter pot of uh, tar that you can get at hardware shops but again um, the heat is going to melt the tar it's not going to be a, a type of um, uh, composite material or material that's going to stay there it's going to be heat affected and then on very hot days uh, the end caps will uh, will shift one of the tests I was going to do was going to be that new thicker uh, quick set silicon just to see if it had a different uh, type of uh, disposition or um, uh, curing uh, result. Um, I can no longer find quick set silicon, so I'm assuming that um, they took it off the market or it's in uh, another shop. The last one on the list was uh, will silicon stick to silicon? So I have done that test and let's see. Uh, what the results are there, and also will uh, the Sikaflex, uh, will the Sika product stick to silicon? We need to know that in case the end cap blows off, uh, and then we have to stick to silicon. If we can't get the silicon off, and we have to put the uh, the new silicon in in the uh, different silicon in the same place, will that stick to the old silicon? So let's let's get the results of that test, and then um, I'm going to have to get the work done. So just very briefly. Um, the previous section of the video where I was working on the end caps that's how much I got done I got half of it done and you notice here that it has come away from the silicon it's holding fairly well with the, uh, the parts of the silicon on the front there but you can see there and there that um, it has come away but not completely so what could happen here is I could just stick it down I could keep going but instead of the roof and gutter silicon I'll use the wet area silicon and if it does look like it's coming away then I can put the rivets in okay I don't want to put rivets in unless it's absolutely necessary because if in future this comes off, people aren't going to come up here and put silicon in the small drill holes. And over time, you know, water will get in and it could, again, unintentionally rot out the, uh, the wood underneath. So I'll put the rivets on the, on the top ridge, not the underneath, so that there's less water. Because if I put it in this ridge here, then water will flow down in that hole, you know, I'm talking about 10, 15 years if it does uh, come off. I think that's what I'll do. I'll keep going, but with a different type of silicon, the wet area silicon. And uh, I'll keep an eye on it, and if I need to, then I'll put the rivets in. So I've got a plan. Okay, so let's do this test. This test is to see if the silicon and Sikaflex will stick to silicon. So let's get that done. Okay, this is silicon on silicon. Okay, it's a bit of a shame about the uh, the angle of the uh, the light. Can't really see it properly, but this is the silicon, so that's that's a good good sign. Let's try to see there. That's stuck well and truly to the silicon. So this 
bit here is stuck onto this bit here. This is the original test to see if the silicon would stick onto the, sil onto the tin roof. So that's, yeah, that's good. Okay, that's stuck really well. Although it will remove, but I think this is still the silic, the second uh, layer of silicon. So that's 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 a pass. Okay, so will it stick to the uh, tin roof? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So the silicon is separating from itself instead of from the tin roof. So that's that's a pass. Okay, here's another uh, test area. So where the tape is, we've got Sikaflex, and where where there's no tape, we've got silicon on silicon. So we know that silicon will stick to silicon. That's uh, some water there. That's made no difference. Um, is this normal silicon or wet area? I'm not sure. I don't think it's wet area. It could be. Okay, but this is Sikaflex and no. Uh, has the Sikaflex cured? No, it hasn't. Okay, so we'll leave these. We'll leave these two tests for later. But that's that's two or three days, and that's that hasn't cured. So that goes over the uh, over the edge, and well and truly out of harm's way. Okay, it's still the same day, and uh, so this part of it was done. Now I've done one, two, three end caps, and uh, I'll film the entire process with this uh, second last one here. Um, for preparation, I've got a hot. I had a hot bucket of soapy water and a, um, a abrasive uh, plastic um, scourer. And I scrubbed just along the edge and then I dried it. So that's what's been done so far. So I'll film the entire process. It's going to take about, uh, say, 10 minutes. Um, you can put it on fast forward uh, or you can even fast forward it to the end of the video, depending on how much time you've got. I know press, people are pressed for time. So I'll just pan over with the hope that later on I'll remember to uh, tell you why all of these uh, bits and pieces are up here. But for now it's just uh, probably the most important process is uh, filming this one um, cap installation there. So I'll do that now. Okay, just a reminder to um, get what you need out of this video. Do your own research, do your own uh, tests and uh, try and come up with the uh, the best way to uh, go about approaching the installation of these end caps. If you have any um, better ideas than me, please um, send me a message and uh, we'll put it on the comments section and other people can see uh, um, other ways of going about it. Okay. going to bring it back as far as possible so that it's sitting on the edge here. It is winter, so you don't want to do this uh, work in summer. The, uh, the roof will be too hot, so I'm going to start on an angle and trim around that way so that there's an overlap here. So you're going to need heavy duty uh, 
scissors. And I'll just lift up that edge and start going across this way. Cardboard box or try to. Okay. Okay, that's all good. So now I'm going to mark this outside edge. We want it to be down as far as possible. We don't want a pool of water here, so I'm going to mark that out a little bit from this this is there's a join here okay so this piece of plastic is tucked underneath here I've, I've undone this tucked that in uh, put it on and then retighten this so this is the join the sheet goes from here to here Continue that straight down, then come come out on the outer edge there. So now, just make sure that's in the shot. Okay, I assume it is. So um, now we've got to undo that one there. I need my hammer. plastic will tuck up underneath that side. Um, yes. Okay, also I need to cut this one out. Okay, so 
So you're going to need knee pads for this job, it's uh, quite hard on the knees. sit all the way back, not being jammed by any of the fronts here, so okay. Now we need to sand it. This is, um, I think it's 80, 80 grit sandpaper, so it's fairly coarse sandpaper. Now, I have to mark where I'm going to sand, so we're going to have blobs on the front and a, a line of silicon on the back, so...
Okay, we'll sand it off. Brush it off rather. Okay, this is the last chance to uh, make sure it's sitting well. Uh, I think I just, yeah, I cut my glove there. So. Okay, let's apply the silicon. I'm going to swirl it around so that uh, it's sitting on the plastic properly. Again, this is wet area silicon. We found that to be the uh, the best silicon. I'm going to put a per, um, yeah, I'll put a bit of silicon along this edge. Okay, put the silicon away. Now we'll place our cap and we'll tuck it underneath the sheet on this side. Make sure it's all positioned properly. So. Okay. Making sure that's in the shot. Okay. Okay. Now I've got some uh, microfiber cloth and I'm going to run along the back edge, making sure there's no silicon sticking out. I'm going to attempt to uh, get rid of this, we'll call it a type of steel. Okay, because of that, I'm going to throw this in the uh, garbage bag and get another one. Okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to wait for this to cure and settle down. Then I'm going to come along and just put a bead in behind. And, uh, and then I'll run along the top. 
like so and clean off the top because there's going to be water sitting behind this there's nothing I can do about that um, you just got to hope that you your roof has got a enough of a run. This is fairly level, but um, you know, if, the, if any rust forms, I can paint along here behind it with uh, black rust paint. So, okay. So. I'll tighten up that side just to lock that in. I'm sort of umming, umming and ahhing as to whether I should put some bricks on this to, to weigh it down. Um, you know, if you weigh it down, when you take the bricks off, if it doesn't uh, stick properly, it might sort of rise and separate. But I have to have this, because this is fairly level, I have to weigh it down and make sure it's flat. Okay, so what's going to happen now is I'll run the uh, the no mill gaps. I might even film it. I run the uh, the wet area silicon behind and also around around these screws holding the tin sheet down. That also has to be done, and possibly along there too. So. We don't want any of the silicon sticking up any higher than the uh, one or two mil millimeters behind here. You see, so we're going to make sure that the, all the silicon's out of there. Okay, because we don't want any more build-up here than necessary. So yeah, that's that's getting to the end of it now. Okay. So that's the the normal um, uh, normal exterior roof uh, silicon along there. And this is the wet area silicon, that one, two, three, four end caps there. Okay, I'll close out this section of the video. I'll finish off the work and then come back to it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, well, thanks for sticking to the, uh, watching the video to this stage. Um, I feel as if we're getting toward the, uh, nearing the completion stage of this project very very lengthy project a lot of experimentation a lot of uh, uh, products that I had to improve on and, and buy other products uh, I am the guinea pig in this uh, exercise there has to be a remedy found for this because a lot of people's porches uh, rot out and uh, I believe that this is the best way that I found to uh, do this project. Um, we moved on to normal uh, roofing silicon, to wet area silicon. Um, we had to improve on our, our um, foam that we put on top of the gutter up underneath the uh, sheet. So, okay, let's uh, start to wrap this up. Um, we'll need a, a type of texture that will draw on plastic like a CD texture I didn't use the small tool I improved on the uh, the paper uh, towel I didn't need this um, I didn't need that knife um, uh, we used the uh, uh, microfiber cloth but you, you could use any sort of towel although I think the microfiber cloth would be pretty good um, we ended up using fairly coarse gritty, um, I think it's 80 grit 
um, sandpaper and we did end up sandpapering the mating surfaces underneath the, uh, the plastic cap. Um, the first section was not sandpapered and the second section was. Um, as I say, I still have to put the silicon bead behind the, um, the cap and we have two silicon around here, around these um, screws holding the, uh, the tin down. Um, this will eventually be used once the silicon's behind the end cap to go around the, the very top of it on a flat profile. Um, tin snips, we didn't use the tin snips. Of course we used the, uh, the end cap. I'll put that... I'll film that again. So that's the product. Oh, feeling a bit faint. Oh. I got that from Bunnings in Australia. Um, we have to uh, cover our hands to to make sure the silicon doesn't get a, get on our hands. Um, we need plastic bags to put uh, the silicon in, anything wiped. Um, we used the um, wet area, silicon. We had to get something to um, remove the screws temporarily and then put them back in. We needed a brush. Um, we need um, industrial scissors, metal scissors. Um, okay. We need uh, we need bricks to weight the end cap. Oh. We need bricks to um, to weight the end cap down to make sure that the end cap is weighted down and won't move and is uh, as low down as possible. We had a bucket of uh, soapy water just to uh, clean the um, clean the metal roof. We got I dried that with um, the uh, the towel. Um, that was for the experiment. So. Down on the other side, we'll have any other materials that I'll go through right now. Um, so do this work in winter. Don't uh, don't do it in summer. So um, yeah, microfiber cloths, um, gloves. A hammer just to get the uh, the rusty to get the screwdriver in the uh, screw to turn it holding the roof down um, I couldn't find my my drill or um, or drill bits so that's why I've got a spare drill and spare drill bits so that's gone to another parallel universe temporarily and that will um, that will rematerialize the other screw and the, uh, the screw bit um, boxes. So that's what we ended up using underneath, uh, on top of the gutter and underneath the um, the roof sheeting. So that's that's the stuff from Bunnings, which is very weak, unfortunately, and didn't work. But this. Uh, this stuff did and we used this went up underneath the sheeting and then under that we had the square block type okay so that that's set like that the top of the gut is there and underneath the reef roof sheeting is there put our all our bits and pieces in a um, plastic bag or a uh, or a box so Okay, so that's it for today. We'll call that success. Thoughts just come to mind. Um, before doing this work, you should consider you won't be able to clean the gutter with your hands. 
Okay, because the end cap covers the gutter. Okay, so the only way that you could clean the gutter is with a hose, to bring a hose up on the roof. Turn the hose on, there's a hose down there, and spray it clean. But usually this is only for a porch, because, you know, you've got tiles. And usually with a house, you don't have the, um, see the gutter sticks up higher or level compared to the roof, um, the roof caps, okay? So you're not really going to get that that blow in underneath the uh, tiles, okay? And it won't blow down under, behind the fascia because it's, it's all been designed properly and it's got past council and everything. Okay. Okay, but a porch is different. Okay, you got the gutter further down than the roof sheeting. Um, highly recommend getting a house in order before you turn 55 to anyone in their 40s or 30s or 20s. Uh, 55 for me is when it's sort of come to the point where, yes, I can still do this sort of work, but I probably should start thinking about a change of lifestyle. So, just another uh, tip. The other half, this half here, took half of one um, silicon, uh, we'll call it a syringe, for the want of a better name. So you can see down there, that is, uh, that comes to about, let's have a look, um, comes to there where my fingernail is, which is half of a tube. So, so in other words, from one end to the other would take a full, uh, full tube of silicon. The, the gutter has to be at the same level as the, uh, the roof sheeting and maybe an undulating gutter can be made to fit up harder against the undulation of the the roof sheeting. Um, that is that is uh, pretty well essential. Otherwise, you're just going to get rot along the front when the water blows up behind the gutter, behind the fascia, and drips down on the fascia and rots out the uh, the beams of the deck. Okay, it's now the 5th of the 6th, 2021. I've got an operation uh, on Tuesday. It's now Saturday, so I had to finish off today. And today was the best opportunity. Um, what I've done is... We've learnt that the wet area silicon is the best. And I've just gone along the back edge there and then with uh, rubber gloves on I've just put it in pushed it in this the back edge here then I've got this uh, plasterer's knife and gone along the top flat along there with a bit of build up behind and I've gone around the screws to seal up the the gap there and um, I've just made sure that it's gone under the plastic a bit and uh, around the top so that the water can fall off. Um, for some strange reason, uh, the first one that I installed has come away from the um, roof and gutter silicon the most, okay? It's a good idea to uh, bring up a board and have knee pads to, uh, to lean on. Um, okay, so somebody's got to be the guinea pig and uh, that was me, so we'll come back and uh, 
we'll check how it went in uh, one year's time. So, God willing, I'll speak to you then. Okay, well, it's the 13th of the uh, 6th, 2022. So, in other words, you know, um, we're out of the uh, lockdowns, coronavirus. Uh, still here, but we're turning our backs on that and uh, people have had their time to be uh, to have their um, vaccinations so um, at this stage of course you probably saw the start of the video where I gave uh, the information on a year later how the work went and this is just a bit of a follow up at the end of the video um, just because I'd see a year later and uh, you know last year and here we are one year later I'd just like to say that the uh, I was talking about a hernia operation um, now I had the operation um, I did lose weight I put the weight back on um, I'm back to uh, you know running around bush track twice and uh, 30 of all the exercises um, the, her the, the lump is still there so um, the hernia operation didn't actually take away the lump and I was told that it could be something else okay so it could be a lipoma I don't know but you know I'm on the other side of it I went through all that and uh, I'm okay now so uh, you know basically this stuff here on this side was put down with uh, wet area silicon. This was applied with uh, uh, roof and gutter silicon. The wet, the wet area silicon did a better job than the roof and gutter silicon. Um, the wet area silicon was used where I used sandpaper on the underneath of the uh, the end cap to provide a better key now did that help is that the reason why the, uh, the wet area silicon um, was better I, I would say I don't think so but I'd also say that I don't really 100% know another thing to be aware of is you can't use this uh, uh, edge capping here if it's put down with silicon and not screws because um, I, I wouldn't use it where there was going to be a lot of leaves and and the leaves went into the gutter okay because there's a very small gap so for, say for instance if this was put on near this tree here then a lot of leaves could get into the gutter I'm, I'm just saying that you can't really clean your gutter once this is uh, put on because it's permanent yeah, so what you could do if there was a tree and a lot, lot of leaves, you could put some wire mesh, okay? You could sit some wire mesh from there to there, just a little bit so, so the leaves didn't get in. I mentioned that there was a rotted uh, beam that I replaced a bit of it. Uh, I think that could have been due to a nail on the outside rusting, and if you have a nail rusting, uh, liquid or, or water will flow in along that rust and rust out the uh, will rust out wood so there I'm just saying that there's a possibility that that could have been uh, due to some other effect okay and there could could have been multiple effects like for instance um, you know could have been uh, water could have been getting up in here in a storm and going down the cement sheet um, at the start of the video, it was very strange how there were direct lines every so often, you know, along the fascia on the outside when I filmed from the from the ground down there. That that's unusual. That that's sort of indicating something like there's a correlation between the undulation of the tin roof and the the outside marks on the outside of the the paint on the um, on the fascia board. And then then as I said, there was a a bit of rotted wood that I had to replace that seemed to be due to just a simply a nail being exposed and rotting out and the the water and moisture running along that rust in the nail so this is quite complicated 
and I think that by putting the silicon underneath here, this, this area here, um, plus putting this over here so that the uh, gutter doesn't flood, and by putting the end cap on, that maybe, you know, holistically, um, this will bring an end to any problems and and this will be okay for the next uh, 30 years, say. Um, plus the fact that water can no longer, um, you know, because driving rain can blow in underneath the, uh, underneath the roof shedding and um, above the gutter. There was, uh, say, a 50 millimetre gap for it to come in, so that can no longer happen. Okay, well, that's it for this work. Um, as I've said before, this, uh, this bridge here that I've built out of cement sheet to allow the water just to go straight over the edge and not do any flooding or anything unknown um, underneath the cement sheet. So yeah, well that's it. Hope you enjoyed the show. Hope this helps. Um, I've got the uh, plastic end capping from Bunnings, cement sheet from Bunnings. Like Bunnings or not, that's where I got it from. Hope this helps. Please like and subscribe. Uh, watching the video, I noticed I had several attempts, but uh, wasn't really um, successful in explaining the uh, the nail. So what I meant was that this fascia board, um, there's a nail going through the fascia board and, and into the beam to hold the beam. Um, that nail rusted. The water ran a, ran along the rust of the nail um, into the wood, the wooden beam, and rotted the wooden beam. Okay, well, all good. Over and out.